Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Clash of the Correspondents. My name's Serge. My name is James. And today we have with us two of our correspondents that are in the top five of the FPL Correspondents League at the moment, James. Noted. We're going to show the badge of the turf. <laughs> I was just thinking, <laughs> what does that part of the league look like? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. All I do know is uh, thanks to Norwich, Mark, FPL Badger, our Norwich correspondent with us, uh, beating City on Saturday. Um, we're recording on a Monday, it's fair to let people know. I've got a shoot off to the pub to watch the West Ham game later. And if we win 11-0, we overtake City in the table. So there you go. Only a 10-goal goal difference to swing our way. And we also have Jack with us, our Burnley correspondent. At Turfy Topper. How are you, Jack? Yeah, good, thanks. Good man. I, I feel like we have to start with Mark. Yes. Um, <laughs> because of what happened at the weekend. Hello, pal. Yeah. Um, you're probably waiting for me to say, well done and all that shit. Um, your team ruined the weekend for most FPL managers. Would you care to explain <laughs> yourself? And myself. <laughs> but I, I didn't remember about that until Sunday morning. It wasn't of great significance or I wasn't particularly bothered until sort of Sunday morning. And then you sort of... Because at the game, I think you've said before, that James, you don't think about FPL and you don't particularly nah. care. No. Nah. Um, and obviously, yeah, when you, when you do go to log in, you, you've I captain Sterling and had to Bruyne and Zinchenko, but you know I'm not bothered about it this week. I can I can let that one sort of sail. You also had Timu Puki. Um, what yeah. is going on with that fella, mate? Yeah, I was going to say it could be worse for FPL managers. It could be like me and bench the the bastard, <laughs> but. <laughs> Talk to me well, about Pookie, yeah, Mark. I, mean, I, I did bench Cantwell. Um, I, just, I, were, I mean, I wasn't gonna, ever going to bench Pookie. I think it came up in a lot of the conversations during the week, especially about a lot of people had Lundstrom and what to do mm. with Pookie and the, the sort of higher ceiling of other people thinking maybe Pookie would just get the one goal maximum. Um, no bonus points, no assists. Um, and I can sort of see why people were thinking along them lines. Um, I wasn't prepared to play Cantwell as well and obviously now I wish I did so um, yeah it's just incredible really no one really expected that mm, I'm going to a pub with a mate of mine in a while who played both Cantwell and Pookie this weekend um, so he's obviously sitting very happy I think he's 65 points or something like that so credit to him wow yeah. Um, Jack, I think you had a. What I'm on. <laughs> yeah, I, I, know, I did notice you. I noticed, I said you guys were both in the top five. You lost your top spot this week, Mark, to uh, FPL uh, Tomo. Um, Blade. Blade yeah. Tomo, who has overtaken. But it's only a couple of points in it. Don't worry, he's still well up there. Um, and your score still starts with a three at the front, unlike the rest of us with a two at the front. So three hundred. You're talking about, I'm in the 40s. No, 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 for the total score, he's 300 and something oh, as opposed yeah. to 200 and something. I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> Jack, you're not doing badly yourself either. This week, uh, I had a good score this week so far. Still one game to go. I don't know if you've got any players from tonight's game. I've got Douglas Deweese. Oh. Bang him. So, yeah, there's a, there's a one pointer there for you. He's going to get a yellow card, but you're yeah. sitting on 69. Yeah. Which Manchild's favourite number. Where are you, Manchild? He's gone now. He's left. Yeah. I noticed you've got two Burnley players in there, Jack, and neither of them are called Ashley Barnes. I know. What's going on? I, I might put him in when I play my wild card. <laughs> <laughs> Not before they play Norwich at home at the weekend, no? Yeah. I might, yeah, I might play it this week, actually, to be fair. Oh, it's a consideration, sure. is it? I like that. Yeah. Big score on them wild card. If you, if you do, but, send me a screen grab of your team because I think I need to sort mine out as well. <laughs> what, what made you, Jack, go with the guys that you have gone for from Bernie? You, got, you went with Pope and McNeil, didn't you? Were they in from yeah, the start? I've li- I only just put McNeil in. Okay. Because I, I had two free transfers, um, but Pope's been in since the start. I just have a set and forget keeper, so I just went for Pope. Mm-hmm. Where, where do you sit? I'm really interested to know, Jack, on um, Ashley Barnes particularly, because, I, I mean, it's obviously what most of the community will be, be looking at. Where, where do you see him and the fact that he's obviously currently at a cheaper price than, say, your Pookie and your, your Abrahams? Um, we had a big conversation before the season, didn't we, about Barnes or Wood? And I think I edged on the side and said Chris Wood, but I don't you know. You didn't, mate. Just because <laughs> just because we play the um, two strikers, you just think he's due to dry up a little bit. Some, t- you know, Wood's not going to go all season and not score, so it's just a tough one. 
You're doing yourself a discredit there, mate, because you absolutely <laughs> were bigging up Ashley Barnes when we recorded oh, was on 30 and 30 in the summer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I was just a bit surprised to see you had Burnley coverage in there and, and he wasn't in, involved. I know you're a big yeah. fan of, of McNeil. Um, why, why, why have you gone for him and you've just gone for him against sort of others at similar value? Um, I think it was just because I had the two free transfers and I needed to get more out of my team. So, um, But um, Gunmanson's injured, so the only person in midfield that's going to really get the points is McNeil. It's Jeff Hendrick. Yeah, well, that was this weekend goal. No, it's um, true. Yeah. yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna like last year when uh, McNeil broke on, broke into the side. He played really well. He's a good player. No one's doubting that. I think people yeah. would just put off this season by his price, right? It just yeah. seems too much money for someone who hasn't had consistent. He's only had one season, and that's not even a full season. Um, it was yeah. most of it, but it wasn't a full season under his belt. Six million. He started the season. That wasn't it. Yeah, McNeil, yeah. Mm, which seemed a lot at the time for for him. Yeah, five point five would have been <clears throat> fair, I would have think. Yeah, five five or five point five. I think a lot more people would have have been looking at McNeil. I think it's the same with Barnes and Wood as well. If they'd have been yeah. six, yeah, a little bit cheaper as yeah. well. I mean, it was it was interesting because when we had you on Jack in the summer, I was kind of really fixed on Chris Wood, and then the fixture to come out just uh, before we yeah. recorded, and I was I was really put off by them fixtures two to four, and obviously Barnes. Um, Returned in the in the first three. I don't think we've had anything from Wood, have we? We've had an no. assist. I don't no. think. No, no. So he far, might have nothing. Got one assist. Are you happy with the start, Jack? Yeah, yeah. Five points from five. Yeah, um, could have been bad result against um, Wolves because we were winning all game and then mm. conceded last minute. But then, having said that, we were getting battered by Brighton and managed to nick a point from there. So swings around. Was, and I suppose your two defeats are Gooners and Liverpool, who yeah. are tough games at any time of, of the year. Yeah. So the two defeats, I suppose you've drawn against sides that are in and around and then you had a good, good solid win on the opening day of the season. Yeah, they're the sort of games you just don't want to lose, aren't they? Mm. No, you can, can you and... just elaborate on something you said, Jack, about, about Saturday? Because what I saw of the extended highlights, Brighton should have won the game for what I saw. Yeah. You said there you, you got battered. Was, was it something particularly, I mean, I think Hendrix was your, the, it was a great goal, was the only shot yeah, on target. Yeah, Grace won it right at the end. Was the, only, um, was the only shot on target. Was there something particularly that was off or, or, or wrong on Saturday? No, I don't think so. It just, <laughs> it's not like Burnley to have loads of shots anyway, is it? So, um but no, I think we started the game well from what people said. I didn't I didn't manage to get down to it, but no, I think it was just a bit of a sticky one for us. Hey, listen, if you're having a bad day at the office and you're picking up a result away from home, I'd, you'd take that. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. And talking of taking results, Mark, uh, I'm going to let you go on on a serious for a bit here, mate. Um, <laughs> how was the underwear Saturday night, Sunday morning? And genuinely, how, oh. how big was that result for you? Well, it was massive. I mean, it was it was the underwear was totally different to what it was Friday night because obviously after the press conferences on Friday, um, there was injuries there which we didn't expect. We knew we was carrying a few injuries, but then there was there were several where um, you you couldn't help but shake your head and you're thinking, hang on a minute, this is, this is gone from us potentially losing maybe three one four one five one to now. You know, six nil, seven nil, eight nil, and obviously in the back of our minds, Ipswich have still got the record um, against Man United from ninety four, ninety five. There was talk in the half time concourse at Anfield when we was four nil down. We was thinking, please, you know, like, <laughs> you know, rein it in a little bit because it was getting a bit silly. And then obviously, you know, we know what a good side Man City are. Um, we they don't need any help. And obviously, you know, with with obviously a couple of the injuries where th- it was unexpected, we're looking at our team thinking we're running out of bodies here. How are we going to p- patch a team together? Um, Farker, I don't know if it was a bit of mind games, maybe, making it sound a little bit worse than what it was. But obviously, there was talk that Godfrey and Krull were sort of major doubts and both of them ended up playing so I don't know whether in the back of his mind he was trying to sort of get rally the crowd and sort of rally the troops a bit of a sort of a fighting call to sort of say come on we're, you know we've got no one left we're you know and because of that obviously the crowd played a massive part um, at the weekend uh, but it's funny I was I think... chatting to Johnny Pringle on Saturday morning and he was sort of saying he thought maybe not the injury list was overhyped but 
the scoreline that people were thinking was maybe overhyped and that City very often do just get the goals and then sort of ease off a little bit. So he was thinking it wouldn't be a, a silly score, it'd be a routine sort of win. Um, the first, the first but, goal, I have to be honest, Mark, I thought the first goal was so important because I, the City mm. were in control of the game in terms of possession, if not, if not um, creating as many chances. And throughout the whole game, none of their chances were... They, they had enough chances, but it wasn't City City. But by getting that first goal, mm. it allowed you to defend very differently. If you look at the last 20 minutes against West Ham, you were chasing the game because you were one mm-hmm. down. The counter-attacking yeah. space that you left for us, there was just we, we were attacking at will for the last 20, 25 minutes. Whereas with City, because you managed to get mm-hmm. that first goal, your two banks could set up, you just snuffed out the space. And then to have a two-goal advantage yeah. to defend. The defending after that was, just, it was fantastic because there was just no space. And watching City, it was like mm. the opportunities, they were never like opportunities that you thought, oh dear, this is momentum's building up and they're going to tear you a new one it just didn't happen I thought you defended so well mm. but getting that first goal and then having we that res- two goal lead was so important yeah I think we restricted them to like you know putting balls across the box there was a lot of blocks a lot of the the crosses were sort of um there was tackles um everyone was flying in and it was it was just generally a very good team effort Byron played I thought really well obviously um big problem at West Ham was his fitness um, he looked solid. I think Max Aarons would do well to get back into the team um, defensively because Byron was so good. Amadou, I thought, was good. Bearing in mind it wasn't his, you know, his, not his natural position. Um, there were several debuts in there as well. But, yeah, I think we did, you know, get bodies behind the ball a lot better than we have done in any of the other games. And we set up... You know, just that little bit more solid and defensively. Um, Teddy hadn't played for about six, seven months. Um, but you wouldn't have known it, I mean, looking at him, because he was in there, he was hustling, bustling, he was frustrating. Um, um, yeah, so generally, very good sort of team effort. Um, you can't argue with that. Bearing in mind, obviously, people were sort of saying we're some of the other games clearances. we was a bit, bit naive. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Games are just saying 50 clearances. 50 clearances. The, the thing the is... I mean, yeah, it's despite crazy. that, despite that result, uh, Jack, with with Norwich coming to you guys this weekend, you still got to be confident that you can um, you can pull out a result. I don't think, like of, of the fixtures this weekend, it's a pretty close match. I don't think you could necessarily say that either Burnley or Norwich were necessarily favourites. Maybe because it's at Turf Moor, I, I think I, Burnley. I can. Yeah. I can, yeah. Burnley are favourites, clearly. Yeah. That's Turf Moor. I, I would, I yeah. would have said the same. I'm trying to be nice to Mark. No, and no, Mark off the back of a win against City. I think, I think I really Mark feel knows. I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, I know, 100%. And I think with Norwich as well, this week, it might be a little bit after the Lord Mayor's Show yes, type but, thing where mm, tough. Um, it, there, was, there was a lot of you know, tired bodies out there at the end of that game. And I know, I know there's a week to recover, but it's going to be a totally different game at Burnley. And funny enough, my transfer I'm looking at is going, depending what Haller does, um, obviously, yeah. you know, in the, in the Villa game, yeah. Um, potentially looking at going Haller to Barnes um, and then going Barnes to Abraham the week, you know, the following week. But I'm well aware of what, obviously, tougher game it would be at, um, at Burnley next week, Definitely. you know. Um, mm, tell us, Jack, what, what are your hopes for this weekend? Do you, um, do you see yeah, many changes in your lineup, or you're kind of looking for c- control C, control V, copy paste with Burnley? You know what yeah, you're going to get. He's only ever made the one change this season, and that's just because Goodmanson was injured. Mm. Um, he's four, did four, say two. something in his press conference about um, rotating a little, which he never does, but he just sort of said <laughs> yeah. about switching it, switching it up potentially because we weren't out of the races on Saturday. Mm. So whether that means Hendrick starting instead of Lennon, or whether it means maybe Charlie Taylor coming back in for um, Eric Peters. Mm. Well, your name, your team name is uh, Eric <laughs> Peters, right? So, um, is he? Do you think he's a, a good consideration for FPL managers? He got the early returns in the season. Um, nothing um, since, but I'd, I'd be the one to say stay stay clear of him, really, because really? Um, he's, you look at his total points and he looks really good. But I think in the first. He got two assists in the first game. Yeah. Um, and one of those was just a long ball clearance that <laughs> got caught in the, the wind. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just like, 
if you were to go for it, I'd say Lauten's more nailed on as a wing back. Mm. Um, cause he's, I don't think Barsley's going to come back into the squad really, unless there's an injury. Yeah, I think um, people looking defensively at, at Burnley just gravitate towards Pope because he's cheaper and he's nailed yeah. on. And um, I the think goalkeeper's point, no risk of rotation. Um, must have been before the last game week, but Tarkovsky had had the most shots in an opposition's box for a defender, which yeah. are obviously headers from corners, but. He's probably due a goal. So. Mm. He's a good player, uh, Tarkovsky. The problem with Tarkovsky is the price, isn't it? Five. Yeah. It's the same mm. thing. You're not going to pick him or me over Pope. Or I, I think Lowton no. is, a, is, a, is a fair shout. Mm. Cause just because he's, he, he's, he's, his place in the team would be a lot more stable than Peters. I absolutely agree with Jack. Yeah. Taylor, at some point, will get back in. We know we've spoken about this so many times about Daesh. If he's happy with yeah. the team and he's happy Doesn't with the performance, it. he won't change it. But... There is a chance on the back of this last one he might not have been too happy because Brighton should have won at the weekend. Yeah, of course. Uh, Not for the first time this season, Brighton uh, dropping points that they shouldn't have. Um, It it is the story of Burnley's season, really. Like last season, I avoided Burnley because of the Europa League thing, you know, this Thursday, Sunday stuff. It just didn't make sense. Second half of the season, you guys were fantastic. Um, And the start of this season, I've avoided Burnley because you're just a little bit too expensive in FPL from that kind of point yeah. of view. But I, I still think Burnley comfortably will be top half of the table this year, maybe 11th at worst. I think you take I think it that, Jack. With Jesus. A bit of a meltdown with Burnley fans um, on Saturday. You look halfway through the game and it's all like, oh, this is the same squad that struggled last year and you know mm. we're doomed. And then it's like we scored and everyone's like, oh, it's all right, it's all right again now. Yeah, um, fickle. That's but, what we are, football yeah. fans. It just depends how you look at it, though, because it's the same squad that finished seventh. So, mm. Jack, non non FPL here, just a quick one, because I know we spoke about it in the summer when you were on. Was there an annoyance with the Sunderland performance? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think after that, I vowed to never go to a cup game again until he starts taking <laughs> But he, he massively he rotate the team again, didn't he? He did, but you still look at the squad and, you know, there he was, have been good drink water was drink water was in there, 35 million. Vidra was in there, he was 15. Um, you know, we had Joe Hart in there, Aaron Lennon. He was still an experienced side. It wasn't like he'd plucked out the youngsters. It was the first time we've ever fielded a reserve 11 that are actually decent reserves, you know, not just like nobodies. But that's not a um, bad sign, mate. A bit more squad depth than yeah. that, like... Um, and I, I mean, think he was just frustrated. I think he'd, he'd actually said in his interview afterwards... Um, these are the players that are coming up to him and saying, why am I not getting a game? He said, well, that's why you're not getting a game. <laughs> well, it's a fair answer. Isn't it? And as, again, that's why he's not going to change the team. Um, yeah. When Mark, but when, Sunderland made eight changes. So Did they really? Fair. Wow. Yeah. Um, you went out as well, didn't you, Mark? Crawley, was it? Yeah, I, yeah, we did. And it's a, I mean, I can sort of relate exactly what you're saying because we made 11 changes down there. And although that's not a priority for us this year as such... Um, them 11 players who came in didn't necessarily do themselves any favours and also in terms of game time that restricts their you know a lot of them lads might not be playing any football obviously in light of the injuries um, changes things slightly but obviously staying in the cup allows you to sort of play you know quite a lot of football um, if you go a little bit further in the cup but other than that and you're not an under 23 you're sort of just going to sit on the bench or you know, you might go out on loan, but yeah, it it wasn't ideal um, in terms of sort of getting minutes under your belt. When we spoke in the summer, Mark, uh, we we kind of looked at at the, at the depth and and the people who could compete with Pookie, the people like obviously Steepman, Buendia's playing really well. I think people kind of stood up and took notice after the weekend performance. We never once sure. mentioned the name Todd Cantwell. Four point no. nine million now. The guy's going to be five million before you know it. <laughs> five million. <laughs> I know. Where, where's he his had, upturn uh, come another, from? Another increase last night, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And the thing well, is, now I mean, he stops is, being is, a, a budget enabler. At four point five, you just stick him in your squad. When he's got to four point nine or five now, sure. I don't know if he is that budget go-to guy anymore. You got to play him, surely. Yeah, I got. I, mi- I, and, and, I missed the Newcastle. Um, I, I missed obviously the the Pookie hat trick for the Newcastle game, but after that, I brought them both in for the the, the Chelsea game in game week three. Um, I'd seen enough of 
them against Newcastle to sort of think they're a threat together. Um, but I mean, Campbell was a funny one because last year there was contracts awarded to other academy prospects, obviously Max Aaron's, Ben Godfrey, um, Jamal Lewis, and Campbell was the one they sat on for for a long, long time. He played a little bit of football in the autumn last year. He got one goal, but he he looked. You know, he, he didn't look um, certainly on the same level as the other three, but he he really, uh, really they weren't sure about him, and they sat and waited and waited and waited, and I think they got a one year extension, and by all accounts in pre season he sort of he blew them away, and there was a lot of sort of mumblings that he might sort of get on the bench, and before you know it is. You know, he's in the team. In the team. So, he was, he was yeah, your best player when you came to him, our place. I definitely think yeah, at the London Stadium, he was your best player. I that think day. Tim Crawl as well. I think, yeah. yeah, outfield player, certainly. I think I think Crawl obviously made some good saves. But yeah, Campbell, uh, Campbell's been good in every game, actually. Yeah, very impressed. Mm. What's, the, if I can jump in, Mark, what's, yeah. the, what's the injury status on um, Hernandez and Vrancic? Vrancic, I think, was just a minor knock. I think his one was a groin, so I don't think there's a. They're looking at a long time for him. I think he he had a bit of a stop-start pre-season, so he's not. You know, he's only come on as a sub so far. He's not started a game. Um, Hernandez is months. It'll be after Christmas for Hernandez. Um, so you're talking probably the same sort of time it. as Zimmerman. <laughs> yeah. You were saying Jack. Um, sorry. So no. Um, so as long as he misses Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Jack, I've got uh, Ashley Westwood in my North v South team versus James. I don't know why I got him in, to be honest, probably because he was just available at the price and uh, Manchild loves a, a bit of DJ Westwood. Um, shall I keep him? Um, he's not really... He's just a two-pointer every game sort of guy, isn't he, really? Uh, he not has his moments. He had football. a few moments at the yeah. back end of last season, but... You can yeah, go to Cantwell, by the way. Two one-on-ones against Liverpool and just blew them both. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, I can get Cantwell. I might wildcard that team. I can also get Salah and Sterling. Well, I've got Sterling. Let's not do that now. <laughs> um, but Burnley is one of the places where I, I, I've got go-to for my uh, North v South team. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's What do you make of the upcoming run and, and fixtures, Jack? Yeah, Quite a fit. We need to get a couple of wins on the bounce, so maybe, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so it's Norwich followed by Villa, there. followed by Everton, yeah. followed by Leicester. So you've got two promoted clubs there. Leicester and Everton are not easy, but on, on your yeah. day, you can get points out of all of them. You've got to be hoping for, what, seven points from the next four? Yeah, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? Um, I think it's one of those, if you're looking from a fantasy football point of view, you think, oh, yeah, some winnable games in there. But when you're sat in the stands, you you know, you're a little bit more nervous, aren't you? But mm. should at least you'd hope for maybe two wins. I'd be happy with two wins. Yeah. It was interesting. We was we we spoke about Barnes v Pookie a lot last week, Serge. Yep. And we was we was we was kind of wondering the idea of coming off Pookie for Barnes ahead of that Brighton game, and then thinking afterwards with respect to Mark Norwich at home afterwards, Villa away afterwards, mm-hmm. thinking was it time to to go in early? It doesn't feel like. Now, That's dead. <laughs> well, obviously, the idea of you wouldn't keep Pookie through City and come off now, nah. but the, just the whole the movement behind Ashley Barnes feels like it's it's just died off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. I feel, which is harsh off yeah. the bat of two blanks. I noticed his his average position, Jack. I don't know if you picked up on it. His average position on Saturday at Brighton is what the guys would tell me is Harry Kane holding midfield esque. Um, he was very deep at times, kind of deeper than like Jack Cork as, a, as an average position. Yeah, I think it's just the way that Dash plays. You see, although it always looks like four four two, if we're under the cosh, Barnes will you know, drop deeper back. Mm. Um, so That's why I was tempted with Wood earlier on in the season because he would have scored like nine goals in pre-season. Actually, Barnes didn't even score pre-season. Um, you know, so you just think, would he be the one? But I don't know mm. with Barnes. It's... Barnes is at 10.5% ownership. Pookie's now topped 40% ownership. The differential is uh, incredible considering... Uh, Chris Wood is 0.6% owned. Mm, nothing. Yeah. At I some... actually mentioned to someone on Twitter yeah. the other day, I was like, I was tempted to go for Wood. Uh, well, at some point, bar. Jack, you'll have a run, won't he? Yeah. No doubt sure. about it. And when uh, he finds the net, he knows where it is. So, mm. you know, I just sometimes look on the other flip side of it because, like I said, Barnes isn't going to keep scoring and Wood's not going to keep not scoring. If, if, if someone... Just... If someone decided if to pick, decides to put um, 
Rodriguez in instead. You know, if I, that I, is one of his changes. Maybe. I don't see Man that Charles at the moment. In. Jack got 69 points last week. <laughs> 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 Weirdo. I hope um, Jack, if if somebody went uh right, I'm buying wood over Barnes now, is that ridiculous? No, I don't think so. It's a price differential now as well of nearly 0. 0.4 million or whatever. Is he six point three versus six point six or yeah, six? It's seven? also twenty one points less so far this season so in far, five but, game weeks. So. But that, that's the age old question, James. How good is the past a predictor of the future? I ask me with my <laughs> big at the back. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, don't know. Against, um, this is the challenge, right? How good is the past as a predictor of the future? And yeah. uh, I think with the likes of Barnes and, and Wood, both are equally likely to get a goal, in my opinion. Maybe, yeah. There, there, there isn't much in it between the two of them. But if yeah. you trust uh, XG, yeah, Harry Kane's not likely to score ever. Well, we know that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd said um, Barnes is one of the worst players on the pitch against Southampton, and then he just got two, he scores two goals and gets one of the match. Yeah, there you go. He didn't are, you really happy with, so much. are you happy with the FPL season so far, Jack? What is it, 275 points or 270 yeah, or something? 292. 292, not bad at all so far, eh? Jack jumped a million places last week. This is a good example yeah. for people who are fretting over themselves. Yeah, like um, me. <laughs> Jack jumped up nearly nearly a million with just a 69. I say just a 69. It's obviously a very good score. Mm, um, but yeah. in, other, in other game weeks, 69 points goes missing sometimes. That's all it took. 69 points and he's jumped yeah. nearly a million. Uh, your game uh, week two score, I'm just having a look. Like You started game week one, 83 was particularly good. Then 49, yeah, then a 38. Happened. In um, in game week three, which is anything less than forty, is is where you're expecting big red arrows um, yeah. to then build it back up again. It's not taking much, has it, to get back up there? I'm not used to these green arrows after last season. <laughs> <laughs> we knew you'd do better this year, mate. Yeah. No doubt about that. Um, uh, Mark, you've done very well. I I, I want to ask, how many goals will mm-hmm. Pookie score this season? How many I- goals will Pookie score this season? Oh, how many goals will he score? Um, well, he's on, he's on five already, isn't he? So mm. Six. Uh, six league goals six, so six, far. Six, of course he is. That's it. Well, um, he'll hit 15, five. I think. I mean, 15 sounds low. I yeah, mean, I mean 20 you, what you're sounds saying, now, yeah. yeah Mark, you're saying he's only scored nine more goals in 33 games of football if he plays yeah. all of them. Well, it yeah. sounds too low, doesn't it? So I think he might hit 20, you know. Um, before 25. the season started, as great... As great as I know he is, um, even at Premier League level, I'm thinking, you know, maybe sort of 10, 15, but now it changes things to a whole new level, doesn't it? I mean, he's, he's fixed to proof, isn't he? He's scored against everyone apart from West Ham, so... Um, uh, maybe you yeah, are going to win maybe, the league so he, Maybe you are, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our title challenge is beginning tonight. I'm excited. And I need Haller to score about five just to save my FPL week. <laughs> so uh, if he doesn't, then I'm not going to be in a good mood. Is there any chance, Mark, and I know you're, a, you're very realistic when you assess things, is there any chance, and, and this is probably more one for the older listeners, is there any chance he could have a Kevin Phillips season? Oh, but if um, Kevin Phillips got 30 goals promoted with Sunderland in, uh, I think it was 99-2000. Yeah. Yes, the answer is yes. I don't know. Mark. I mean, the, the, the answer is yes. The way we attack and the, the philosophy is obviously getting men forward and everything goes through him. He's not one for your headers, winning headers, and he's not one for sort of build up play and things like that. But he's obviously in the right place at the right time and he's, he's, he's quite clinical. I know he missed a sort of a, a very good chance um, in the second half against Man City, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he, he's he's going to get the vast majority of our goals as well. It's just keeping him fit as well, you know. He missed three games last year with injury. You've just got to hope we, we wrap him Similar up in cotton wool. Mm. Yeah, still, I mean, he's still he just, 20 to 1 for top scorer this season. 20 to 1? Wow. You've just lost me five quid there, Jack, because I'm going to go and <laughs> stick a fiver on it. But that's not a bad shout at all at 20 to 1 for top goal scorer. Nah, that's um, good. Definitely. Not at all. Six in the first, in the first I, five. I wonder, Mark's kind of mentioned it there, obviously just before he scored the third goal, where he was desperate to get it on his right foot. He missed the chance on his left foot before, and he didn't look at all comfortable mm. on his left foot. And I wonder mm. if people have seen that now and will like, overcompensate. Because Stone's basically let him go. So go on and like, hit it with your, your left. left foot. I, I, I wonder if that's something to, 
to watch and people will just literally force that on him now because he didn't Maybe he look needs overly to, needs confident. To work on his left foot. Or he needs to have a love child with Yarmolenko between but, um, the two of them. They can he, put he, a two-footed player together. He, he hasn't got... <laughs> what's, what's strange about him? He hasn't got... If I look at Barnes, for example, I'd go... Uh, he's, he's, he's obviously he's an aggressive player, he's tenacious, but one of his greatest strengths is how quickly he gets his shots away. Yeah. I'm still looking at Pookie and I'm going, I don't know what your best trait is, mate. He's a good looking like, He's just mm-hmm. seen... He's a, a sexy beast. I, I just look at him and think, you're okay at everything. <laughs> But his finishing it should have been goal conversion, yeah, I mean, right? It's the finishing think, percentage is where he stands out. Yeah, and it's, it's, the, it's the intelligence and it's the build-up play, how he works with sort of the, the Brendier, Steeperman, Cantwell now. Um, mm. It's just, just how they link in. And I think Farker apparently has meetings with all... The, I don't know if it's the same at all these other clubs, but he has meetings, in-depth, long meetings with each individual player and sort of gives them a, a, a you know an a, a in-depth description about what they do and what they don't do and everything like that. And he sits down and sort of says, you run this way, you, you do this, you do that. And ha- somehow it all links in with, with, with the other players. And rather than sort of spending time out on the training ground, a lot of it, maybe it's the German way, I'm not sure, but they, they do a lot more classroom work and sort of get things into their head that maybe they just didn't, didn't come naturally before or something. Yeah, maybe. Jack, to wrap up, go on. Prediction for the score for this this weekend. Last week, last week we had Adam and uh, and Stephen Toomey. Stephen predicted Arsenal were going to win three nil. Adam <laughs> was generous with three one. Adam got the right number of goals, but it ended up being a nice Desmond two two. Um, Jack, go on. What do you think uh, this weekend? I'll say two one. Two one to Burnley. Yeah. Tidy home win there. Mark, what are you thinking this weekend? As a realistic prediction, I've my not mind. Bias. Norwich two one. Norwich two one. Everyone's Good going man. with the two yeah, one. Ch- I, yeah, I, love I think that. we'll. Um, I think we'll go one nil down, and then I think we'll um, we'll wake up and we'll um, we'll get two late goals. Mark, do you think two goals will be enough to win a game? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with a two two. What are you thinking this weekend? I think a goal scoring two two. Um, I, 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 Burn, I think Burnley will win. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, it's a really hard one to call. I mean, I would, if I was doing a bet, betting coupon, for example, I would not be betting on this game. Well, I'm just you know. thinking Jack might agree with me on this. There have been games at Turf Moor in the last few years where the expectation's been on Burnley to win games. I'm thinking draws like with Huddersfield and stuff where you've struggled a bit, but Norwich won't go there and play like, come on then, Burnley. Come. Norwich will go and play them. Mm. So I, yeah. I think it will play into Burnley's hands a little bit as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We, we don't like it when people do what we do to other teams. <laughs> we don't like it when we, you play like that, mate, yeah. I can assure you. Yeah. Um, but we, we sometimes have better performances against the big teams. But just, you know, like, I think when we played Liverpool last year, um, we were doing we were doing all right. And then you look at the bench and they bring Salah and Firmino on at the same time. So it's just like... Um, but then, like you said, we've been had some shockers against Huddersfield and teams like that. So, mm. don't know. Yeah, all that said, I wouldn't be surprised if Norwich went down one. No, for sure. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> but that's that's why I think I was gonna I was gonna tweet yesterday, but I just didn't get the old phone out on Twitter. It's why we have the best league in the world, right? This weekend has shown us, if nothing else, we have the best league in the world with Norwich doing what they did, Watford's performance yesterday. No, no question about it. We do have have, the, have the, the best league. The, the Norwich, the, the second half of the Norwich game and the Watford game might be the, the two most compelling halves of football you see all season. Yeah, quite possibly. Um, compelling for different reasons. Watford, the, for the way they, they threw the kitchen sink at Arsenal when you don't expect that. And, and Norwich for... It was amazing, but I'm, I'm sure... He, I, Jack, did you watch the game as well, I take it? The what game? The Norwich, Norwich game. City. Oh, no, I missed it, no. I, well, Jack won't feel like this then. But everybody was watching injury time. It was like City missed one in the 91st minute. And you went, they'll have another one in a minute. It was 92nd minute. It was yes. like, they'll have another one in a minute. Well, we, but it was 92 and a half. We was, <laughs> it was like, they have another one. We Unbelievable. Was obviously in light of the players they'd brought onto the pitch, you know, obviously uh, Jesus, Mares, KDB. Um, who else come KDB. on? Just, De Bruyne. De Bruyne. Yeah, of course. So you, you're, looking, you're looking at the, the four minutes being added up and you, you do think historically what happens with a lot of the bigger teams like... We, there's only so long we can hold on for and you, you, you are expecting Man City to score there's no doubt about it um, 
that's probably why there were sort of such good celebrations at the final whistle because no one thought it was going to happen, you know. And and as you say, it just it does give the smaller teams hope that anyone can beat anyone um, in this league on their day. So you know, there's, there's nothing to be fearful of. Um, obviously, we'll get spanked in some games, but particularly Carrow Road this year, just it should spur them on a little bit to think we can have a go and we're capable of you know turning it on. There we go. Brilliant. Uh, Jack, just for balance, can I ask you, were you there when you beat United 1-0 in 2009? Yeah, yeah, I was. So you do know how it feels. <laughs> yeah. Jack would have been about sort of six years old, was, surely. Yeah. You're thinking too, Jack would have been about six years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we just want to wrap up by saying thanks again for the articles and the contributions uh, online and Twitter and all the rest of it with your clubs. The amount of positive we feedback we get from correspondents and people retweeting their stuff saying, you know what, these guys know their stuff about their clubs always is, is really appreciated. So, so thanks for doing that. This um, Good luck this weekend for both of your clubs, really. I, I don't have much else to nice say. Nice one. Thank you. Yeah. Are you yeah, going up, do. Mark? No, I'm not. It'd be the first game I've missed, but um, no, I'm going to gonna have a rest this weekend after last week. So um, <laughs> Slack, huh? Yeah. You'll be there, Jack? Yeah, I'm working actually. Oh, oh no, the, he's always. I know there. it's the sale. I only, only have to do it like it's three, four times a year. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I work in retail, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, do stay tuned. Tomorrow we have for people the final plan going out, James, and, and live stream also, tomorrow. Night. We'll be live streaming Villa Bournemouth. Is it? No. <sighs> you sell it so well. I don't know who's Southampton. Oh, Southampton Bournemouth. That's the South Coast derby. Um, Man Child's going to have chicken wings. We're going to have the footy on and we're going to live stream on YouTube where you can join in on the chat. Um, it was quite a good fun last time when we did the opening day of the season with uh, Liverpool. Um, that was good fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Liverpool Norwich. Um, other than that, stay tuned for more content coming out from Planet FPL. Hit like, subscribe, share, all that other stuff. Thanks, lads. Good luck this weekend. Q Music Man Child.